Welcome to PTE Updates. For more video subscribe our channel. For many years the favorite horror story about abrupt climate change was that a shift in ocean currents could radically cool Europe's climate. These currents, called the overturning circulation, bring warm water and warm temperatures north from the equator to Europe. Susan Luzier, an oceanographer at Duke University, says scientists have long worried that this ocean circulation could be disrupted. Along the way, we have built unashamedly beautiful buildings, two of which have won and been runner-up in the prestigious United Nations World Habitat Award, the first time an Australian building has received that international honor. We rely on older concepts of Australian architecture that are heavily influenced by the bush. All residents have private verandas which allow them to socialize outdoors and also create some defensible space between their bedrooms and public areas. We use a lot of natural or soft materials and build beautiful landscape gardens. In animals, a movement is coordinated by a cluster of neurons in a spinal cord called the contract patterns generator, CPG. This process pr produces signals that drive muscles to contract rhythmically in ways that produce running or walking, depending on the pattern of pulses. A simple signal from the brain instructs the CPG to switch between modes such as going from standstill to walking. Lawrence Stephen Lowry, RBSRA, was an English artist. Many of his drawings and paintings depict Penn Liberi, Lancashire, who lived and worked for more than 40 years, and also Salford and its surrounding areas. Lowry is famous for painting scenes of life in the industrial district of northwest England in the mid-20th century. He developed a distinctive style of painting and is best known for his urban landscapes, people with human figures often referred to as matchstick man. He painted mysterious, unpopulated landscapes, brooding portraits, and the unpublished Naria networks, which were only found after his death. Now that story has been scotched as a part of a contingency planning, but it was a symptom of the dramatic turn of events in South Australia, and it flushed out other remarks from water academics and people like Tim Flannery, indicating that things were really much worse than had been foreshadowed even earlier this year. So is Adelaide, let alone some whole regions of South Australia, in serious bother? Considering that the vast amount of its drinking water comes from the beleaguered Miri, Something many of us outside the state may not have quite realized. Is there a predicament something we have to face up to as a nation? The ocean has been getting bluer, according to a study published in the journal Nature. But that's not 
really good news for the planet. It means that the plants that give the ocean its green tint aren't doing well. Scientists say that because the ocean has been getting warmer. For all his fame and celebration, William Shakespeare remains a mysterious figure with regards to personal history. There are just two primary sources for information on the bard, his works and various legal and church documents that have survived from Elizabethan times. Naturally, there are many gaps in this body of information, which tells us little about Shakespeare the man. Those of you who've never heard of the term Neo-Latin may be forgiven for thinking it's a new South American dance craze. If you're puzzled when I tell you it has something to do with the language of Romans, take heart. Over the years, many classes who have confessed they are not really sure what it is either. Some have assumed that they are so-called Late Latin, written at the end of the Roman Empire. Others have supposed it must have been something to do with the Middle Ages. Or perhaps it's that Pseudo-Latin, which my five- and seven-year-old boys seem to have gleaned from the Harry Potter books, useful for spells and curses that they zip one another with makeshift paper ash ones. No, in fact, Neo-Latin is more or less the same as the Latin that was written in the ancient world, classic Latin. So what's so new about it? The effect of the first difference is, on the one hand, to refine and enlarge the public views, by passing them through the medium of a chosen body of citizens, whose wisdom may best discern the true interests of their country, and whose patriotism and love of justice will be least likely to sacrifice it to temporary or partial considerations. Under such regulation, it may well happen that the public voice pronounced by the representatives of the people, will be more consonant to the public good than if pronounced by the people themselves, convened for the purpose. That brings us to the CEO's second duty, building everyone or more accurately, building the senior team. All the executives report to the CEO, so it's the CEO's job to hire, fire and manage the executive team. From coaching CEOs, I actually think this is the most important skill of all. Because when a CEO hires an excellent senior team, that team can keep the company running. When a CEO hire a poor senior team, the CEO is up spending all of their time trying to do with the team and not nearly enough time trying to do with other elements of their job. The senior team can and often does develop the strategy for the company, but ultimately it's always the CEO who has the final go-no-go -no -go decision on strategy. A majority of US high school students say they get bored in class every day, and more than one out of five has considered dropping out, 
according to a survey released on Wednesday. The survey of 81,000 students in 26 states found two-thirds of high school students complain of boredom, usually because the subject matter was irrelevant or their teachers didn't seem to care about them. Many different types of barcode scanning machines exist, but they all work on the same fundamental principles. They all use the intensity of light reflected from a series of black and white stripes to tell a computer what code it is seeing. White stripes reflect light very well, while black stripes reflect hardly any light at all. The barcode scanner shines light sequentially across a barcode, simultaneously detecting and recording the pattern of reflected and non-reflected light. The scanner then translates this pattern into an electrical signal that the computer can understand. All scanners must include computer software to interpret the barcode once it's been entered. This simple principle has transformed the way we are able to manipulate data and the way in which many businesses handle record keeping. To figure out these counterintuitive findings, the researchers conducted an experiment in a hotel room. They rounded up some lizards, gave them a perch, and then used a leaf blower to mimic the effects of high winds. They set up a net to catch any lizards that lost their grip. As the artificial wind blew, the lizards moved so the perch took most of the airflow. But their hind legs would stick out. And if those rear limbs stuck out too far, they acted as sails. Eventually, those back legs were blown off the perch, and the lizards were just holding on with their front two legs. And they could only hold on like that for so long as the wind speeds increased further and further until eventually they were blown off the perch and into the nets. So shorter back legs gave a survival advantage, a trait that might be passed on to the next lizard generation. Crows, she says, are what's known as partial migrants. Every year, some members of the population migrate between breeding grounds and their overwintering grounds, like parking lots. But others just stay put. So Townsend and her colleagues wanted to know if that urge to migrate was something individual crows can turn on and off. To find out, they captured 18 crows from overwintering spots in California and New York. They fitted the birds with little backpack satellite tags and tracked them for several years. Overall, three-quarters of the birds migrated, an average of 300 miles. And more importantly, if they migrated once, they did it every year, suggesting traveling is not a habit they switch on and off. The researchers also found that migrating crows returned faithfully to the same breeding grounds every year, but they were more flexible on where to overwinter, which could be a good thing. Brooke and her colleague Mark Newman studied who swapped messages with whom on a popular online dating platform in the month of January 2014. They categorized users by desirability using PageRank, one of the algorithms behind search technology. Essentially, if you receive a dozen messages from desirable users, you must be more desirable than someone who receives the same number of messages from average users. And then they asked, how far out of their league 
do online daters tend to go when pursuing a partner? I think people are optimistic realists. In other words, they found that both men and women tended to pursue mates just 25 percent more desirable than themselves. So they're being optimistic, but they're not. They're they're also、um, taking into account their own relative position within this overall desirability hierarchy. And the study did have a few more lessons for people on the market. I think one of the take-home messages from the study is women could probably afford to be more aspirational in their mate pursuit. Well, in 2004, we integrated ticketing in Southeast Queensland, so we introduced a paper、uh, ticket that allowed you to travel across all the three modes in Southeast Queensland: so bus, train, and ferry. And the second stage of、uh, integrated ticketing is the introduction of a smart card, and the smart card will enable people to store value,、uh, so to, to put、uh, value on the card, and then to use the card for travelling around the system. Hi everybody. This is Joe Biden. I delivered a report to President Obama, laying out how far we've come since he put me in charge of the cancer moonshot. That was back in January, and to lay out a real vision for where we need to go in the immediate future. To to do in five years what otherwise would take ten. To inject a real sense of urgency into the fight against cancer, and to change the culture and reimagine our system in order to be able to win. You know, when President Nixon declared a war on cancer in 1971, he had no army, he had no resources, and no clear strategy. But after 45 years of progress, funding research, training scientists and physicians, and treating millions of patients, we now have an army, and we have tools, powerful tools. And with the moonshot, we now have a clear strategy the, for the road ahead. It matters, folks, because there's a consensus now that we're at an inflection point, with science, medicine, technology all advancing faster than ever and offering real promise.、But、we can't play by the rules of 1971. We didn't have this working for us. Hi everybody. This weekend, we'll dedicate the newest American icon on our national mall, the National Museum of African American History and Culture. It's a beautiful building, five stories high and some 70 feet below the ground, situated just across the street from the Washington Monument. And this museum tells a story of America that hasn't always taken a front seat in our national narrative. As a people, we've rightfully passed on the tales of the giants who built this country. But too often, willful or not, we've chosen to gloss over or ignore entirely the experience of millions upon millions of others. But this museum chooses to tell a fuller story. It doesn't gauze up some bygone era or avoid uncomfortable truths. Rather, it embraces the patriotic recognition that America is a constant work in progress. That each successive generation can look upon our imperfections and decide that it is within our collective power to align this nation with the high ideals of our founding. There are a couple different stories 
you can tell about our economy. One goes like this. Eight years after the worst economic crisis of our lifetimes, our economy has created jobs for 71 straight months. That's a new record. Unemployment has fallen below 5%. Last year, the typical household saw its income grow by about $2,800, the biggest one-year increase ever. And the uninsured rate is at an all-time low. All that is true. What's also true is that too much of our wealth is still taken by the top. And that leaves too many families still working paycheck to paycheck without a lot of breathing room. There are two things we can do about this. We can prey on people's worries for political gain, or we can actually do something to help working families feel more secure in today's economy. Count me in the latter camp. And here's one thing that will help right away. Making sure more of our families have access to paid leave. Today, having both parents in the workforce is an economic necessity for many families. But right now, millions of Americans don't have access to even a single day of paid sick leave. 